Hey there everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm so glad that you could join me once again today. So in case you didn't know, I'm currently busy with a series of tutorials introducing Unreal Engine 5. 5. So this is part 3 thus far of hopefully a 5 part series. In the last couple of weeks we looked at firstly how to install Unreal Engine onto your PC and in the last tutorial we looked at the user interface or how to navigate your way around Unreal Engine. So this particular series is earmarked or aimed at new uh, users, in other words first time Unreal Engine users, as well as iCloners who's always wanted to render the animations inside Unreal Engine. So today we're going to get into the animation part of it and we're going to actually look at how to transfer your characters, props and animations from iClone into Unreal Engine. And we're going to be looking more particularly at this scene that I've transferred here. This is a really large scene that I put together inside iClone and I transferred over to Unreal Engine. We're going to look at how I transferred our main characters, Eren and Tara here, as well as the school bus, which just happens to be a huge file and took a very long time for me to transfer. And I'll tell you guys how I did that. As well as this 12 extras you'll see in the scene there, including the bus driver, there's even a driver of the car, as well as uh, teens and extras in the background there as well. And then of course I've got these two background vehicles, including a green pickup, or a bucky as we call it in South Africa, as well as this toon style panel van, or combi as we call it in South Africa, that I needed to transfer over to Unreal Engine. So to do this, I used a combination of Reillusions Auto Setup plugin as well as the Reillusions Live Link plugin. And I'm going to talk you guys through as I'm transferring this, which works best for which particular application because they both have their strengths and they both have their weaknesses. And I discovered, and this is my personal perspective at least, that some things work better when you transfer it using one or the other. So that's what we're going to look at uh, in this tutorial today. But for now, let's look at the three ways. Yes, there are three ways to transfer your characters, props and animations from iCloud into Unreal. Let's get started. Let's look at those three ways. So there are basically three ways to transfer your characters or props from iClone into Unreal Engine. The first way is what I'm going to call the traditional FBX method. And this is probably the most tedious way of doing it. Here you would need to export and save your character and animation as an FBX file. And then you've got to import it directly into Unreal Engine. And this will require you to basically re-rig your character or prop, uh, that's if your prop is going to be animated. You're also going to have to retarget your animation inside Unreal Engine to make the actual animation work. And you're going to have to manually apply the materials and textures, which takes forever. And then of course, you've also got to manually set up your physics props uh, for your clothes or your hair as well. So this is not even an option for us. So we're going to be focusing our attention on these tutorials around the other two methods of doing it, which is using the Reillusion Auto Setup plugin or the Reillusion Unreal Live Link. So we're going to start off by looking at the Auto Setup plugin. And at this time, in this particular tutorial, we'll continue into the live link. Otherwise, we'll push that one to the next tutorial. So let's get started with the Auto Setup plugin. Before we get into the actual installation process for this particular plugin, let's just have a look at what it is and what it actually does. So the Auto Setup plugin basically exports your characters or props with all of its materials applied. So no need to manually put in your textures and your materials, it automatically carries that over for you. It also automatically creates the necessary blueprints for you. So if you want to tweak anything or change anything or adjust anything, you can do that right inside Unreal Engine. It also exports your character fully rigged, which means no need to create any skeletons or place any bones, and your character will be ready to receive any animations that you might be sending its way. It also, and this is a very good one as well, it sort of sets up your physics for you. So in other words, your hair and your cloth physics is already set up. Uh, again, this might need some adjustments uh, inside Unreal Engine, uh, but we can talk through that uh, in one of the future tutorials. And then plus, one of the features I really enjoy the most is it also exports your character in the quality you want. So you can basically decide whether you want to send over a high quality, high poly version of your character or a low poly version of your character. And this can be set inside iCloud before you actually send your character or your prop over to Unreal Engine. So this is an amazing tool because it does all of these things for you automatically. Okay, so now that we know what it does and how it works, let's have a look at how to set up this particular plugin. To enable this brilliant plugin requires basically setting it up on both sides. So therefore you need to set up the actual plugin and the shaders on iClone as well as Unreal Engine. So let's start off by installing it into iClone itself. This particular process, process is rather easy and it's done automatically for you. So what you gotta do is uh, go to the top of the screen and then find your plugins. Now find the character creator and iClone auto setup. Once you've clicked on that, you can now click on the actual tool for Unreal. This will open up the Illusion website for you where you can now download the actual plugin. Now you gotta basically click on the download button. Once you've downloaded the actual .exe file, you can now install it by double-clicking on it. 
and then running through the installation process. Uh, you've got to follow the prompts, making sure to click I accept the terms of the license agreement, otherwise you cannot install the plugin, obviously. And then once completed, you'll see a yellow auto setup folder. This particular folder should be automatically placed inside wherever you save your Reillusion plugins. And then when you click on the folder, you'll find these three files inside. You'll find the plugin folder itself, and then you'll find a folder called content, and then you'll find a little file called RL README, which is basically the instructions on how to actually install the plugin further. Okay, so the plugin and the shaders for iClone are set up, uh, but don't close this window because we are going to need to come back to these particular files and I'll show you exactly where you're going to copy the contents and the plugin folders. But for now, let's go into Unreal Engine and let's start installing the actual setup inside Unreal Engine as well. So setting up the plugin for Unreal is a more manual one compared to the iClone setup um, and it involves two steps. The first step is copying the setup folders and then the second step is actually to activate the plugin inside Unreal Engine 5 itself. So let's start with the first step, which is to copy the folders. Now, in order for iClone to automatically set up your rig, your materials, and your cloth physics, it requires a few relevant files. And these files are found inside these two folders, the plugin folder and the contents folder, which we just downloaded. Uh, so to do that, you basically got to drag and drop those two folders. But before we drag and drop them, let's first find our actual Unreal project where we want to copy it into. So to do that, you can either open up the Unreal Engine launcher or you can open up Unreal Engine 5 itself. We spoke about that last week. Once you're on that page, you can find your project and then right click on it. And basically, you're going to now try and find out where your project is. So if you right click on it and then show in folder, it will show you exactly where your project is. Now you'll find your directory inside Windows. So now all you're going to do is copy your plugin and contents folder from our resolution directory into the Unreal project directory, like this. You can either copy and paste, press Ctrl C and Ctrl V, or you can drag and drop it, uh, whichever you prefer. And boom, done. Great stuff. Now we can open up our project in Unreal Engine. So this will take a lot longer to open because now it's going to recompile all your shaders based obviously on your project settings and the change as well as introducing the new plugin. So when the MHC setting windows pops up, just choose the ray traced option. If you have a ray tracing card, that's what I normally click on. You should now see a small window, which should pop up at the bottom right hand corner of your screen, confirming that a new plugin has been installed. This is a good sign. That means that your installation process is run properly. You can click on manage plugins and then the plugins window will actually open up for you. You should be able to see the Reillusion plugin for Character Creator and iClone Auto Setup installed. Now to make sure that it's enabled, there's a few ways you can do that. Um, the one way is basically the arrow uh, in the little box on the title. Uh, if it's not enabled, you will need to click on the box and restart the actual engine. Uh, fortunately, since the new update, you don't have to restart the engine for some reason. But if you obviously had it open, uh, you'd need to restart it. There are two other ways to confirm that the plugin is enabled. The one way is basically there's an icon on the top of your screen. And you can see it, it's got the iClone logo on it. Uh, and then the other way to check it is to actually go into your folders and look for the CC shaders folder, which should also be there. Now, if you transferred your characters or your props over to Unreal Engine from iClone and find that the object materials are not important, chances are you're probably missing that important CC shaders folder. So if you do pick that problem up, check if the folder is there. If it's not there, you didn't copy the particular folder over into Unreal Engine. Uh, and that's it. Now we finally set up. Uh, okay, now let's transfer our props and our characters over to Unreal Engine for our next step, which is to see how we actually use this particular plugin. Okay, going back to my particular scene with all of its characters and all of its props and all of its vehicles. And um, so what I plan to do is, and I'll show you guys this, I'm going to transfer my two main characters, uh, which is Eren and Tara, as well as my school bus. I'm going to use the Live Link plugin to, to transfer that. But I'm going to use the Auto Setup plugin for nearly everything else. Um, so in this particular case, we're going to start off by transferring our bus stop, which is a stationary object. And then we're also going to transfer our two extras here, Jay and Alexis, who are sitting on the bus stop, as well as our two vehicles, the green pickup with our driver Jason, as well as our tune combi or our tune panel van, as it's known in America. So those are the ones we're going to be doing today. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that using the Auto Setup plugin. Great stuff. Uh, let's start with the easy one. Let's start with the bus stop. Now, this is just a stationary object with no animation. So we're going to transfer it in that way. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to select your prop. Now, go to the file, which is on the top left hand corner, scroll down to export, and then choose export FBX. And this will bring up the export FBX window for you. Now all you're going to do is choose the Unreal Engine preset, which is done by basically clicking on the small little uh, down arrow and then selecting Unreal Engine. 
our prop has no animation so in this particular window we're not going to choose we're going to choose current frame we're not going to choose uh, the actual animation and i'm going to stick to a 2k for my texture you can obviously choose a 4k or you can choose a smaller texture if you want uh, depends on where in the shot of your screen you're going to be placing this particular object i'm going to go with 2k uh, now all we have to do is hit the export button all right now we need to select the folder uh, where we're going to save this particular file. Uh, I'm going to create a folder for myself here. I'm going to call it Bus Arise iClone Exports. And this is basically the folder I'm going to save all of my props and characters into, uh, which I'm going to be using in this particular scene. And uh, then because I'm going to import multiple items here, I'm going to create a folder for each of them. Uh, this one I'm going to call Bus Top Prop. And I'm going to give the FBX file the same name as the folder. Click Save and it will export our FBX file. Okay, now over in Unreal, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a folder where I'm going to be uh, basically dragging and dropping this file into. So I'm going to create the folder by right-clicking and choosing new folder. Uh, we're going to name this particular folder school underscore bus underscore arrives. Note the underscore, like I said to you guys in the last tutorial. Unfortunately, Unreal do not work with spaces, so you got to use the underscore there. Uh, and then I'm going to change the color of my folder um, so it's easier for me to recognize. And I'm going to do that by right-clicking on it and then going up to set color. Um, let's make it pink just so that I can see it immediately. There we go. My folder is ready. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to change all my Relusion folders to green um, by doing the same method. So right-click, set color. And I'm choosing green, obviously, because that's the corporate color of the illusion. And I'm doing this just to make things simpler for myself because I've got a lot of folders here and it's much easier to color code it for me. So I know that my illusion folders are green, my unique or own folders that I'm creating is pink. Okay, now let's create a folder for the actual bus stop itself. I'm going to do that inside my school bus arrives folder, uh, which is basically where I'm going to be storing all of my stuff. And again, uh, this is very important. Uh, these folders can, you know, if you're just going to drag and drop files in here, it can get very complicated. So it's always ideal to create a folder for each of your inputs. And uh, I learned the hard way um, that if I just drag and drop the stuff in there, the folders become mixed up, the files become mixed up. So I would highly advise you to create folders for all of these things, just to keep things neat. Okay, now we can import our file by dragging and dropping it. So here we go, there's my bus stop prop fbx, uh, my 3D object file here. You'll see there's a couple of folders, I'm choosing the 3D object file, and I'm dragging and dropping that into the folder I just created. All right, now an fbx import options window will pop up. Um, now the selections here are very important, especially when you want to import a character with the rig and with animations. Now, I actually took three snapshots of this particular window with its pre-selected option choices which I'm going to use to make sure that I get it just right. By not clicking a tick box here, you could find yourself not getting the correct materials applied. So this is quite important. And you are more than welcome to take a snapshot of my particular settings on the screen there. So a couple of things that's very important. I'm going to run through this very quickly. The first thing is to make sure that you do select the tick box for the skeletal mesh and the important mesh. Uh, make sure that's ticked. And then also to use the TO as a reference pose as well as, and this is very important, import morph targets. Now, obviously we're not gonna need any of this for the bus stop we're gonna be importing now. But the beauty of Unreal Engine is once I select these uh, tick boxes and I create it for this particular file, I don't have to do it again. So I'm basically setting myself up for when I bring in my characters later on with the animations. So that's why I'm being so meticulous. We're going to be importing some animated characters later on. So I'm going to make sure that I have import animations uh, ticked as well as well as uh, selecting the animated time from the drop down menu. Uh, make sure you use the default sample rate uh, and that's also ticked. And then, uh, yeah, I think that's it. Now let's, uh, let's hit the import button. And now we let the auto set up plugin do its thing. Here we go. Okay, there we go, it's all done. Um, now we'll find all our folders, our characters, and everything is ready for us. So inside our folder for our bus stop, we'll find our mesh. You'll find your animated sequence. Now, obviously there's no animated sequence for this particular prop because it's a stationary prop. Um, but because I selected import animations, that's why it's there. You'll also get physics assets pre-created for you. Again, this is a stationary prop, so that's not important to us. And you even get a little skeleton, bone rig skeleton as well. And again, that's not important to us, but it is there. There we go. Now, to get our prop into our seat, it's as easy as dragging and dropping. So we're going to grab the skeletal mesh item, drag that and drop that into our scene. 
Now we want to make sure that it's positioned exactly where it is inside iCloud. And to do that, we'll have to go to our little transformation table. For those of you who know who watched my previous tutorial and know exactly where that is, that is found in the right hand side under the details panel. And we want to make sure that it's put uh, it's basically set to zero zero in terms of the actual transform as well as the rotation positions. And then it will automatically be placed where it was placed inside iCloud. So if you're not happy with the textures uh, that iCloud brings in, now, I mean, the textures are not too bad, um, but I still feel like I can do much better. So that's where the dragging and dropping of those pre-made Unreal materials we spoke about in the last tutorial comes in. Uh, and I showed you guys how to do that last week. Now all I'm gonna do is apply it. I'm gonna start off with this PBR materials pack, and we're gonna look at the different metals here for our bus stop. Uh, this is very basic you, you're literally dragging and dropping so you choose your material you want to apply uh, the material instance you drag it drop it onto your item and there you go it's as simple as that and obviously if you're not happy with it you can then change it to something else and you can basically create the materials you want to create inside unreal engine by literally dragging and dropping no blueprints necessary no c plus plus necessary it's as simple as drag and drop all right, so that covers our stationary prop, but what about our characters? Now, how do I get my friend Jay or Alexis over to Unreal Engine here? Uh, the process is very similar to our bus stop. Um, so what you gotta do is, you first thing I would suggest you do is to actually bake your animations. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, I'll explain to you how to do that. So you go onto the animation tab on the top of your screen, then you choose flatten all objects with constraint. And what this actually does is it automatically bakes all of your translations, all of your rotations, all of your scaling that gets baked in, uh, and then it also bakes in any object attachment. So in other words, if your character was holding something in their hand and you went into bake the, uh, sorry, the flatten all the object constraints, uh, you'd not need to actually ha attach it to the hand anymore. The object will move by itself now because that's all baked into the actual animation. Uh, and that basically makes the transfer process, I think, a little bit easier. You don't have to do this. You can actually transfer it as it is. But I found that by baking it, it goes a lot quicker and I get a much more accurate result as well. So once you've baked the actual animation, you'll see you'll, in your timeline, you'll find that everything is there. There'll be no translation keys anymore. So now what you're gonna do is you gotta select your character inside iClone. Basically go to the same window we went to earlier on. You go to export, export FBX. Uh, and you're going to select your character and then the choices are pretty much the same. You basically choose export FBX, you choose the Unreal preset. And this time around we're not going with current frame but we're actually going to go with the full animation process or at least the animation button. Uh, and here you just need to make sure that you got the frames correctly from which frame to which frame your animation takes place. Uh, once you've done that, you can basically export your character and it will export your character together with the animation in it. So the difference between the actual live link and auto setup plugin is the auto setup plugin. What it does is it takes that FBX file, it then saves it onto your hard drive. And then once you've got it on your hard drive, you're basically re-importing that particular file from your hard drive into Unreal Engine. Live link is a bit different. Live link is basically transferring it directly from iClone into Unreal Engine. At least that's how I understand the process to be. Importing it is exactly the same. And now we're again gonna drag and drop that 3D object file into Unreal Engine. And here is a new window. You gotta choose what quality you want. And we're gonna go for high quality here because we want our character to look good. Once you click that, a very familiar window will open up again. And this is the input options window. Uh, and because we've already gone through this in our last exercise with the bus stop, we've already selected import animations. We've already selected animated time. We've selected all of those things. We can literally just click import and it will start importing our file for us. All right, all done. So our character is now ready. Let's open up the folder to see what's inside here. So once again, you'll find our mesh file as well as the animated sequence. To make sure that you animate the sequence came out properly, I normally just double click on it. It'll open up the animation window. And there we go, there's our animation. Great stuff, all done for us already. And then inside the folder, you'll also find your physics asset folder. This is a very useful folder. This is basically where your hair and your clothes physics assets have been set up for you. Uh, we'll go through that at a later stage. And then you'll also find your bone rigged uh, skeleton of your character there as well. Okay, that's it. So our character Jay is ready for his starring role in his movie. I'm going to show you guys exactly how to get the animation playing on the character when we get into the actual sequencer. But for now, we've got Jay there, we've got our bus stop there. So Alexis can obviously be carried over in the same way. I'm not going to go through that. But what I'm going to show you guys is quickly just with one of the vehicles, how I transferred that over, which also went quite quick. So here we've got an object with an animation as well. Um, and the process is very much the same, uh, but we'll go through it very quickly. Once again, you select your uh, item. In this particular case, it's going to be our tune combi. And we want to make sure 
sure that our animation is playing properly. We're going to bake the animation. What you need to do with the vehicle, however, is you'll see that every single wheel has its own animation. So what I normally do is I bake the animation for the actual vehicle itself, the chassis of the vehicle, as well as the wheels. And obviously, if you've got a steering wheel that's turning, or in my other case with my green pickup, you've got a character inside there, I'll make sure that that animation is all baked together. Once it's all baked, and then I can export it. Now, to export it, it's exactly the same. You select your item, you go into the top window, you go to File, you go to Export, Export FBX, you open up the Export FBX window. And in fact, we don't have to change anything here because we are also going to be taking over the mesh as well as the animation. And we can literally just hit Export at this stage. Exactly the same process. Uh, and once we go into Unreal Engine, we create a folder for our particular tune combi here. Uh, we will then drag and drop in a file, as easy as that. And we're going to choose our, our presets already chosen for us, and we're happy with that. It's worked before, so we just click Import, and there we go. All right, same thing there, and we'll find our four files again, our animated sequence, our skeletal mesh. Those files will all be there. Um, so yeah, so it's as simple as that, uh, and you can do that for basically any animated object or character that you have inside your scene. Uh, and I think that's where I'm going to stop it for today. Next week, we'll look at the actual Live Link plugin, um, which is a little bit different from this, but very similar as well. And then obviously, we put it all together. I'll show you guys how to add the animations onto your characters, onto your props to make your actual movie. And we'll do that hopefully next week or the week after that. I hope you guys got something out of it. Please, please, please do me the favor of sharing this with somebody that you might think will find it useful. Or if you enjoyed it, please don't forget to hit the like button. And please subscribe if you haven't done that, even if you found one thing useful. Because as I'm sure you can see, this particular video take a long time to edit. Uh, I enjoy doing it, but I enjoy people appreciating it even more. So yeah, thanks so much, guys. Until next week, see you then. Bye-bye.